email. Sounds friendly enough, right? I mean, that's a friendly enough hello. Who wouldn't welcome something like that? Typically, you'd say never, but this might be one of those exceptions. But why? The reaction from Melody here is a constellation of emotions and provides the viewer with everything that we need to know. And what we need to know is that Melody has been found by her childhood lover and that a friendly hello always hits different when it comes from death itself. We see Melody experience basically all the stages of grief in a heartbeat. She goes from shock to denial to fear before finally landing on the look of someone resigned to their fate. And why is that? Because she knows that over her shoulders isn't the saint that she knew in her home, but the devil that she doesn't in her church. See that kid with the cane? That's Franklin's saint. And as dangerous of a moment as this feels for Melody, it is even more pivotal for him. Theirs is a complicated relationship involving drugs, money, and death, and the only thing more powerful than all three, change. And everything between these two has led to what's about to happen next. This one dope moment where Franklin drops his cane and we get to witness the birth of a true menace to society. Sorry to just show up like this. But to understand how dope this scene is, we've got to run it back. See, Snowfall follows the crack cocaine epidemic in its infancy in L.A. in the 80s. It explores how the U.S. government supported the drug trade in America and turned South Central L.A. into a war zone. But before that, Franklin Saint and Melody Wright were South Central Ken and Barbie. They were both young, smart, attractive, and motivated. And if it feels like we're supposed to think that they're perfect, it's because we are. Their surnames are our first clue. The names Saint and Wright aren't accidental and are meant to be ironic. Much in the same way that Breaking Bad is the story of an all-American father's descent into a life of crime, Snowfall is the story of an all-American boy doing the same. Over the course of Snowfall, we watch as the game forces the noble and idealistic Franklin to compromise his moralities and principles one inch at a time, until there's very little left that resembles the college kid that we all met in season one. I said a little, because to the extent that Franklin Saint has any humanity left, you're looking at her. Throughout its run, the truest barometer of Saint's empathy and humanity at any time is always his relationship with Melody. But who is Melody? She's been Franklin's neighbor and crush since they were kids. She lives with her father, Andre Wright, who was the sergeant for the LAPD. This is super problematic because while she's gearing up for one last summer before she goes off to Spellman, her boyfriend next door is becoming equal parts Scarface and Nino Brown. But who's Franklin? Well, that's tricky because in seasons one to three, he's the hyper-intelligent 21-year-old who rises to become LA's most notorious drug kingpin. Though young, he's cunning, ruthless, cool, calculated, an absolute boss and patriarch at the pinnacles of his powers. But season four opens with a different Franklin scene. He's completely mentally, spiritually, physically broken. And rival gangs are calling him weak to his face. He can barely even dress himself and he's addicted to pills. And most importantly, most embarrassingly, he's even been forced to use a cane. In most professions, a cane is just a cane. But if you're a drug dealer in L.A., it's potentially a fatal problem. Because in a world dominated by strength, Franklin's cane is a tangible and obvious representation of weakness. It's a vulnerability where Franklin can afford none. And to his enemies and rivals, it doesn't scream intimidation as much as it does invitation. Franklin's cane is also significant because although Sane has received a lot of help, it's barely seemed like he's needed it. Over the course of three seasons, we've watched him outsmart his parents, the cops, international criminals, and the CIA. And he's always come out smirking in the end. In his quest to fulfill his version of the American dream, We've watched him systematically shed every bit of weakness and every vulnerability until only two remain, Melody and his cane. Saint's cane represents his humanity, and that humanity is embodied by Melody. Because, actually, she's the one who gave it to him. See, in the final moments of season three, it wasn't the many rival gangs encircling Saint that finally got to him. The person who managed to circumvent his best laid plans and put three in his back wasn't an enemy. It was the girl next door. No. But to understand why, do you remember when I said Melody's dad was a cop? Yeah, 
it went about as well as you think. See, Andre was LAPD and a neighbor to the Saint family. He had a lot of respect and affection for Franklin until he learned that Franklin was the reason that crack was flooding the streets. After a lot of effort, Andre finally arrested Franklin for murder, but Saint was exonerated when his CIA handler pulled some strings. After this, Andre took it personally, making ending Franklin's empire his life's work. Saying life's work might be a little bit of an overstatement, because at this point, Saint made sure that Andre didn't have much of one left. In retaliation, Franklin's family set him up. They sent a woman to seduce him and ultimately got him suspended from the force. Despite being placed on suspension, Andre made it clear to Franklin that he had no intention of leaving the situation lie, which ultimately prompted Franklin to kill him with his own service weapon and stage it to look like a suicide. But the most tragic aspect of Andre's story wasn't his death. It was that he died with the knowledge that not only could he not keep the rock off the streets, he couldn't even keep it out of his own home. Because shortly before he was shot, Andre discovered that Melody had become addicted to rock. While Franklin was becoming a kingpin and her father was going full man on fire, Melody decided to enjoy her last summer before college with partying and experimentation. Everything was fine until the night before she was to leave for college and she decided to try crack for the first time at a party. From there, we witnessed one of the most drastic and gut-wrenching transformations from addiction ever put to screen. Melody's falls from grace is an abrupt, tragic nosedive into the streets face first. And we watch as the realities of that street life ravage and pluck every bit of dignity that she possesses. We see this child broken down to fragments. She goes from a character who's defined by everything that she has to one who is defined by everything that she's lost. She loses everything to Franklin's drugs. She loses her future. She loses Franklin. And she even suspects that she's lost her father because of Franklin, but she just can't prove it. But even with her drug habit spiraling out of control, she keeps searching for the truth until she finds it. And in the season three finale, she ultimately shoots Franklin in the very same spot that he shot her father down. Season four finds both characters profoundly changed. Franklin has his cane and Melody has gone clean. Franklin has moved on to consolidating power in Cali and Melody has moved on to Texas where she's become a devout Christian and volunteers at the church that we saw in the beginning. All the while, the question looming over the season remains, what would Franklin do to Melody for shooting him? And it's a good question because we've seen Franklin exact bloody revenge on many folks for a myriad of reasons, great and small. If Franklin is the God of LA, he's definitely the Old Testament type. So it's notable that the answer to what Franklin would do to Melody to his humanity has been largely nothing. Which brings us all the way back to where we began. Because Franklin stalks into this church as nothing short of victorious. He has just finished dominating every rival that threatened him and has claimed total power for his own. He has just completed either usurping or thwarting every guiding force or authority in his life. And the cost has been high. It's been his soul. He's traded away nearly every piece of his humanity for power, and he stands here in front of the very last piece. And he's here because she's betrayed him again. See, Melody spoke to a reporter about Franklin's business. A reporter that Franklin has already killed, and he's decided to deliver the news to Melody personally, which he does initially with the same fresh Prince of Bel-Air charm that we're used to so far. Reporter friend, Irene. She was killed a few weeks back in a car wreck. You know, thought seeing as how the two of you was so close. It's only right I came and delivered the news in person. All of this is leading to a moment. A moment where we're introduced to a saint we've never seen before. And it's terrifying in a way that will be considered iconic for years to come. A moment where Franklin Saint is filled with so much malice and menace to society that he virtually becomes it, where he chooses power over humanity. I'm not mad at you for shooting me. I know you was fucked up on that pipe. And in the end, I've come out of it stronger. So I was just gonna let sleeping dogs lie. But then you decided to go behind my back about my best 
could create a whole shit storm of problems for me and mine, and I can't have that. Can't lay in bed at night knowing that at any moment my future could get blown up by my past. So, if there's something you want to say to me, something you want to get off your little chest, then please say it now, because after this, I promise you, I fucking promise you, there are no more chances. This is Franklin Saint telling Melody and the audience that he's made his choice. And you know this because of her response. All right. There's one thing. You tell me the truth, you'll never hear from me again. Admit that you killed my daddy. The only thing that she wants is the truth, to not be gaslit. In the end, she's only asking for compassion. The old saint, the schoolboy, would have given it to her. He would have said something compassionate here. Whereas the new saint, this new menace, he only says. Goodbye, Mel. He says this because after a season that opened with Saint struggling to rebuild himself after being shot, we are finally privy to what it is that he's actually been making. And apparently, it's nothing short of an apex predator. Because this is the moment where Franklin leaves the two things that make him feel weak in the same church. This is the moment where Franklin Saint drops his cane. Take care of yourself. pretty dope. Do you like the video? Check out this other recent clips from View the Right Thing and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified about all of our latest videos.